Hi, everybody. <laughs> and welcome, Thanks. Suzanne. Thank you. <laughs> Great to have you here on a Friday afternoon. Yeah. Um, next week, Suzanne makes her debut at Cafe Carlisle here in New York. She's going to be singing uh, tracks from her latest album. We just heard one. Yep. Oh, you look... You look like that's a big undertaking. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready, yes. Okay, good. Uh, um, Suzanne's album came out in October, Lover Beloved and Evening with Carson McCullers. So let's start there with the album and, sure. and this fantastic author, Carson McCullers, who you've admired since your teens. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who need a quick literary reminder, uh, McCullers uh, grew up in the South and she wrote the masterpiece The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. And actually this year she would have turned 100. Yeah. Um, sadly she passed away at age 50 after living a very heady and complicated life, it's probably fair to say. Yeah. What draws you, Suzanne, to this particular author and, and ultimately led to this project? What I love about Carson McCullers is the truthfulness with uh, which she writes. She writes about children. She writes about black people. Uh, she writes about poor people. She writes about all kinds of people. And her um, belief really is that uh, it, it, it's really all about love. It's all about unconditional love. Uh, this is what shines through in her work, and it's something I found relevant as a teenager and something I still find relevant even more today. It's, the album is kind of a concept album, and you embody uh, McCullers in, in a way. Um, yeah. When you do embody a person like that, um, how much of yourself do you weave into the narrative? I try to keep myself out of the narrative as much as I can, but I'm attracted to the things that express uh, what I feel as well. So in this picture, for example, I am dressed as Carson McCullers. This is sort of a um, variation of something she might wear, and there's photographs of her smoking a cigarette. Um, so this is sort of my interpretation of one of her photographs. Uh, one thing that's not always clear is that the songs are from a play that I wrote and that the play will be um, will have its um, world premiere next February uh, on Valentine's Day, actually, uh, at the Alley Theater in Texas, Houston, Texas. So uh, it's these are not it's not that I embodied her um, in spirit on the album. I'm actually embodying her uh, for two hours on a stage. Um, so these are the songs. These are ten of the songs from that play. One of the, um, something that I read about you and, and this project which struck me um, was that you, you were drawn to her in part because um, she's very courageous and she wasn't afraid to write about her own bisexuality, which at the time was very courageous. Mm -hmm. And you're heterosexual. However, you made a reference to when you were younger, you didn't particularly like being a girl. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I, it's true. Uh, there were times in my life where I found being a girl in New York City very difficult. And I think I went through a period in the early 80s where, if, especially if you look at some photographs of mine, uh, I would have loved to have been no gender at all. And some of the songs reflect that. A song like Small Blue Thing is really a love song, but you can't tell what gender is singing at, to to which gender. So um, that really appealed to me. And for a while, I felt that I kind of went through this phase where if I could have chosen to be no gender, I would have done that. And all of that changed after the birth of my daughter, um, where I felt very happy and very proud to be female. Um, and so I sort of left that period behind. But I really understand that desire not to be defined by your gender. Let's talk about um, women in music for, for a minute because we did just have International Women's Day. It's Women's History Month. Um, would you say, you, and you've been in this industry for, for quite a while now, Yes. would you say it's harder or easier being a female in music now than it was, say, back in the, the 1980s? You know, I, I've always um, felt that being a female in the music industry is... it's. I, 
I've never found it to be really relevant. I've never found it to be particularly difficult to be a female in the music industry. Um, one thing that really struck me was um, I grew up with a stepfather. My stepfather was a Puerto Rican man named Ed Vega. He raised me more or less as his own. That's where I get my name from. But I met my birth father in the late 80s when I was in my late 20s. And I learned that my grandmother had been a drummer in an all-girl band in the 1930s and traveled the vaudeville circuit. And I thought that was so amazing. And there's all these photographs of all female bands that traveled through the vaudeville circuit in the Midwest. Um, so I had thought, and the media at the time was treating it as though this was some kind of like really special thing. Oh, look, she writes these songs, and she's a girl, you know. And I thought that's really, it's really silly. I mean, because women have been making music for the longest time. So um, I don't really see it as any more or less difficult than it is now. I think women are more widely accepted. You have all kinds of women making all kinds of music, and that's really how it should be. Um, there is a lot of great footage of you from the 80s when um, Tom's Diner came out, when Luca came uh, out. Yeah. It's, it was really fascinating to go back and look at some of that stuff and um, see some really amazing shoulder pads. And some reporters <laughs> some with hair. some some reporters with some amazing haircuts. Yeah. Um, are you aware of the wealth of footage that's available on YouTube from from the very beginning of your career? And do you ever explore it? I, I wonder what that must feel like. Um, am I aware of the wealth of it? Not really. Uh, it's not my, wouldn't be my favorite thing to do is like sit around on a Friday night and like research myself. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that you did. That's nice. Um, you know, certain things, if they're posted on Facebook, if someone finds something interesting, I'll go back and go, oh yeah, I remember this time period or, oh, you know, this was a really odd interview or something like that. But it's, it's nothing that I, I don't spend a lot of time um, just sitting around thinking about the old days. I, I, I don't. Well, it's hard to believe, but it has actually been 30 years since those breakout songs, Luca, Tom's Diner, catapulted yeah. you to international stardom. Mm -hmm. um, you continue to make great music. You, you still tour. You do festivals. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, what is your relationship like nowadays with those two songs? Like, Do they ever feel like they're children who grow up but never leave the home because people <laughs> always talk about them, I'm sure. Or do they feel yeah. like you're, you're babies who you're, you hold dear? I hold them dear. Uh, those two songs are still meaningful to me. I can feel that they're still meaningful to an audience. The audience is waiting to hear those songs. So when I sing those songs at the end of the show, I feel the connection to the audience. And especially Tom's Diner, which um, started off as such a little song and then became like this dance song. <laughs> so now when I sing it, it really brings the audience together. Everyone's waiting to hear it. And uh, it's like a little party that I close the show with. And I, I always enjoy it. Uh, fairly recently, Tom's Diner was sampled by Britney Spears. Um, also, Not just sampled, but covered. Yeah, she yeah. covered the whole song. She went yeah. to town on it, yeah. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> yeah. And Fall Out Boy did sample it in yeah. um, their song Centuries. Mm -hmm. um, Adele, among many others, have cited you as, as great influences in their music. So what's it like learning that you've left a mark on, on these artists who are doing great things of their own these days? I'm always tickled and I'm always grateful when someone cites me as an influence, especially someone like Adele who is, is so popular and she's so down to earth and she's so real. Um, I, I'm grateful and I love it and I, I, uh, I, hope, I hope it continues and uh, that's what I've got to say about that. I think it probably will. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're active on Instagram. I've seen a lot of your posts. Um, mm -hmm. Do you ever wonder what it would be like if social media existed when you were breaking out? Uh, and are you glad that it didn't? Um, it's not one of those things I've thought about. I, you know, I, I enjoy it. I see it as another art form. I share photographs that I take, uh, old photographs. Do I think my career would have been different? Maybe. I mean, maybe when I was very young, when I was in my teens, I found it very difficult to play on a stage. I felt really shy. It took me a long time to get over uh, the uncomfortableness of having people 
looking at me and judging me. So maybe I would have been one of those kids, like playing in my room and putting it on YouTube, and then, you know, maybe that would have been different. But, you know, we'll never know. <laughs> my favorite track on your most recent album is New York is My Destination. Oh. I really like that song, um, which I take uh, is a nod to McCullough's decision to move from the South to the Big Apple. To New York City, yeah. As so many of us do to pursue our dreams. Yeah. Um, look at us all here pursuing our dreams <laughs> in yeah. New York City. How yeah. are those dreams working out? <laughs> um, <laughs> How big a role has living in New York played in your growth as an artist and as a person? New York City is always with me. Uh, I tour all the time, but I'm from here. I came here at the age of two uh, with my parents. We moved here from southern, from Los Angeles, uh, from Santa Monica. I grew up, I spent five years in East Harlem and 12 years on the Upper West Side, and I've never left the island of Manhattan. So I feel that the flavor of New York comes through in the songs, in the situations that the characters are in, the names of the characters. Um, New York is all through it. Uh, and it's part of who I am. And uh, I, I think I'm just here for life, really. <laughs> I think a lot of us feel that way. Yeah. Um, as you prepare for this run at uh, Cafe Carlisle, tell us, what, what do you like most about performing live in front of an audience? I love the connection. I love a stage. I love the spotlight. I love having my uh, toys that I play with. I have a top hat that I use on certain songs. Um, I love telling the stories again. And I love feeling the excitement of the audience when they hear a song that they know. Uh, you can see their faces light up. Um, it's, it's always the same. It's what I really love. It's uh, better than recording in a studio. Um, it's the real thing. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. I'd love to see if anyone in the audience would like to ask a question. Hey, um, so I, I know that you had an illustrious career with uh, you know so much tremendous success. I was, was just wondering, um, like, do you feel like you've evolved as an artist uh, coming from your humble beginnings up till now? I do feel that I've evolved as an artist. Um, I think that, well, first of all, acting, which is something I studied in college but hadn't really done throughout my life, uh, has made me a better performer. I feel I'm a better performer now than I was when I first started. When I first started, I was terrified of moving away from the microphone. And I would never move, I would never dance. And now I feel I'm much more extroverted uh, than I used to be when I was younger. So that's one way that I feel I've developed as an artist. Well, and you, you, you used to also be a dancer. I was a dancer, yeah. I spent, uh, most of my training is actually in dance and not in music at all. Okay. So. Hi, I was Hi. wondering what's the most meaningful song you've ever written? The most meaningful song? To myself or to everyone? Uh, both. I think probably, it's probably Luca. Um, because Luca is a song about such a difficult subject. It's about child abuse, which is so hard to talk about. It's nothing that anybody wants to talk about in, in real life, in daily life. And when people write to me, and write to me on Facebook, and from all over the world, and tell me their own life stories, I still find it very meaningful. And uh, I still feel that connection to those people. And some of them have told me that I've helped them, that I saved their life, that they were able to get medical help because of that song. And so that song has a kind of weight to it that um, the other songs, as much as I love them, I love Tom's Diner, I love Caramel, I love The Queen and the Soldier. But Luca has the most meaning, I think, in the long run, in the, in the real world. That's what I think. Hey, Suzanne. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, Suzanne, uh, Luca and uh, Tom Steiner still brings me back to that time in my life. Uh, yeah. 90s. I, I was wondering um, like what it was like for you uh, maybe before those songs came out while performing in, in New York or like developing your music. Did you yeah. have uh, an idea of what you wanted to be like uh, as a folk singer or like as a, the type of musician you wanted to be? I did. Um, I wanted, I worked many day jobs before I got my record deal. 
and I wanted the career that I then went on to have. Um, I was actually kind of amazed that I was as successful as I was because I never thought of myself as a pop singer. So to find myself on the pop charts was a little weird. You know, I was like, okay, you know, I'll, I'm not going to say no, you know, but uh, it wasn't something that I actively pursued. Um, but it was a great feeling to have that kind of acclaim and that kind of success. What it was like before was I just worked really hard. I played at Folk City. I played at different venues. Now maybe I would have played at the Bitter End, which is one of the few clubs that are still around. I worked on my mic technique. I worked on telling stories to an audience. Um, I kept a notebook with notes on all my performances and what I felt comfortable wearing, for example, and what I didn't feel comfortable wearing. So I tried to be better uh, in every way that I could, which I still do try to be better in everything that I do. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for those great questions. And thank you so much to Suzanne Vega for joining us today. And good luck at the at Cafe Carlisle. Um, Suzanne thank will you. be there from March 14th to March 25th. All the best. Thank you so much. Thank you.